that by no means all of the Arab world carries with them the genes of Esau. In particular, a large segment of the Turkish population is related to Esau, as are most Syrians and the Kurdish people of Iraq. We should at least have heard of the Ottoman Empire, which ruled the Middle East for many centuries, from about 1300 to just after World War I. The Ottomans were a dominant tribe in the nation of Turkey, and it was these particular Turks who are direct descendants of Esau. And of course, these Turks are Muslim. And we know from Bible prophecy that the Turks are going to play a primary role in the events of Revelation as enemies of Israel. It all comes together, doesn't it? The thing we must also understand is that the majority of Muslims in this world are in some way or another related to Esau, even the ones in Afghanistan. So this enmity that would occur between the twin brothers, Jacob and Esau, almost 4,000 years ago, has everything to do with the condition of our world as it is right now. It's what's led up to our current situation and how it's going to all play out leading up to and through the Great Tribulation. Now looking at a little more of the blessing, or really I think curse, that Esau was given, it says, by your sword shall you live. In other words, violence, pillaging, that shall be Esau's way of gaining wealth and prosperity. And as I've explained on a number of occasions, these prophetic blessings have more effect on the person's future descendants than on the person who originally received the blessing. And that is what we find as we follow the progress of Esau's line. Esau's descendants didn't become shepherds. They became conquerors, bands of robbers who descended on caravans that passed through their lands. War was their way of life. War is even at the heart of what is now their religion, Islam. Further, the blessing also says, and you shall serve your brother. I want to give all the praises and the honor to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shah Bahashem, Recha Ha Kodash, and double honors to the elder apostles and bishops of Great Millstone. Salute and honors to you, other elders and you, brethren scattered abroad, even supporters and followers of the faith and supporting the truth in the ministry. Shalom even to you, a few sisters, you sincere ones. Shalom to the elect. So anyway, I did a video yesterday, real quick. I did a video um, talking about Esau, and somebody left a comment saying he could be saved because of the third generation. So, you know, went into the scriptures and everything, and now he's so pissed off that he's saying, well, your commentary is horrible <laughs> and all these things, and it's all right. Uh, but we don't specifically plan what we're going to say. Right, and this if you're looking for that, you gotta go to some of those is other Israelite groups that is looking for the great orator speakers and the uh the great captions in the background and bringing in all the excitement right so we're we're not set up here to give you some entertainment protocol, so to speak. We're up here to teach and reach the elect so anyway, as you see in the beginning of the video, uh, I was going back and forth about the uh, Deuteronomy 23. Okay, man be ignorant, let him be ignorant. But then I ran across this video. Now and I see where Divine Prospect gets this doctrine from. Okay, the Arabs being the Edomites because he married an Ishmaelite, but also a Canaanite, um, you know, who Esau married. And then they, you know, these, this is where these doctrines spring from. Now, not to mention... Yes, some of them, Turk, Turks are, are the Edomites, but guess who the Edomites are, right? We know who the Edomites are, the ones that's running this world. But this is where also, where the black only Israelites get it from. It's various other doctrines that the Hebrews is not fully authentic because they only believe in Torah anyway. So, and a, a letters of Paul was confusing. Why? Because they only believe in Torah. So what you see is these people are coming up with doctrines that they're getting from these people and then they're fusing it in with the debates and trying to bring disrupt, disruption. Okay? That's what they're doing. So, uh, as I said before, it's, I'm, I want to read some commentary, right? So it's not that some of the Edomites dead. The Edomite, Edom spread a seed. Right? Well, hopefully through this lesson, we'll get there. But right now, and I want to scroll through a little bit of this commentary and see what the com uh, scholars have to say. Right? This is Matthew's Henry uh, commentary. It says, 
There shall be deliverance and holiness at Jerusalem. And the house of Jacob would gain, occupy the possessions, much of the prophecy which fulfilled when the Jews returned to their own land. But the, uh, the salvation and holiness of gospel is spread in the conversation uh, of the Gentiles. Seem also to be attended, especially the rest, restoration of Israel. So first, first off, we got to understand that when you look at the scholars, they have some things right, but they can't see for uh, uh, foreseeable future events, right? Because they're not prophets. They're not going to show you what's coming. The Lord has his prophets set up. Let me get that real quick. I believe I have this up. Amos 3 and 7, surely the Lord will do nothing but reveal of his secret unto the servant, the prophets. This is why um, Daniel had to break down the dreams. Uh, I believe with Nebuchadnezzar. Because they couldn't do it. They had scholars back then. And those scholars couldn't break down the foreseeable future events. This is why this is all spiritual. So according to scholars, all they see is what they'll, they'll equate everything from that time period that time in general or past they will never show anything that comes to the future unless they go to revelation right the 13th chapter and talk about the mark and then they'll start talking about the future but far as the old testament and the torah they don't look at that as uh future events right just to um, touch on that it says the destruction of the antichrist and the prosperous state of the church to which the prophets bear witness when crisis come and not Yahweh and not to till that then shall the kingdom be the Lord's in full sense of the term. So this is what they say. But let's go and I'm going to just scroll down. That's what they see, say. What they what, Let's see what they say about the house of Jacob, the house of Jacob. Um, this is their commentary uh, of the two tribes, whole 12 tribes, the house of Joseph, they talk about the 10 tribes, the house of Esau for stubble, as unable to resist or secure themselves as stubble to resist the flame. So they, this is where vocab in them, they'll get, they'll go into these scholars in their commentary and they don't look at it the way we see it. They'll look at it they say the whole house of Esau shall be stubble. And we'll see it as them being totally destroyed, but they'll look at it and say they're just being brought low, right? And, and they shall kindle in them, but it don't say kindle the fire in this commentary, right? It says, this was fulfilled by Hyrcanus, Hyrcanus and the Maccabees, right? So they're saying according to the Maccabees, that all the house of Esau was destroyed. This is what they're saying. But we're going to prove that's false. But more fully to accomplish the mystical sense, in a mystical sense, when the Lord shall make his church as a fire to all its enemies. You see, where does this stuff come from? And Jerusalem a burdensome stone to all nations. So you got to understand these scholars they only want to present a smooth picture, right? A rated PG type picture. They don't want to present a rated R picture, right? So we must understand that. But, uh, I, you know, this, here's another one. In the house of Esau for stubble, I'm just reading. And they shall kindle in them and devour them. That is, the Israelites shall fall upon the Edomites who will not no more be able to withstand them than stubble can stand before the devouring flames of fire and shall utterly waste and destroy them. Okay. And there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau. They shall all be cut off and swallowed up among the Jews. Not so much as a torchbearer left that carries the light before an army. So this one says it. But as I put the, the scriptures in the beginning, they're trying to make it seem like it's the Arabs because actually the, the real Edomites are not going to say it's them. So this is why they got that going on over there and they're blaming the Arabs, right? Which they started, by the way. Edom is the one started it. 
and they're blaming them. They're kicking them out of the land, and they're saying that those are the Arabs. Those are the Edomites. So that's what they're doing. They've always been crafty doing sick things like that. So let's go to Obadiah 1 and 4. It says, Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle, and though thou set thy nest amongst the stars, thence will I bring thee down, saith the Lord. Now, true, the Babylonians had the eagle. Of course, Edom had the eagle. Edom itself did have the eagle because of the power. But who are they today? We'll get into that too, uh, as well. Um, it says, let me go on down to here. Just to get to the point so we can see who who they are. It says, um, how are the things uh, Esau searched out? How is this hidden thing sought up? All the men of the Confederacy have brought thee into the border, and the men that were at peace with thee have deceived thee. So now he's saying, in other videos I saw him say, that the Arabs are animals and they're deceptors and they rape and pillage everywhere they go. This is what the, this man said. Now, who does this really sound like? <laughs> who who does that sound like? Okay. We know who that sound like. Let's go to three. The proud of thine heart have deceived thee, though that, that thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rock, who habitation is high. Well, wait a minute. So now they're going to blame the Arabs for living in a habitation of rock. But now when you look at any part of any city in the country or around the world where these people inhabit, even parts of Africa, you look at bird's eye view and you see all the cities that look like cliffs of rocks, right? Looks like the skyscrapers, the tall buildings, the short buildings. They look like the cliffs of the rock. So process of, uh, process of elimination we knew who that is. Now we go to, um, uh, this is a little clip I saw, Edom and Rome. It says, um, the basic sketch relationship between the, um, the polites of Israel, Judah, Judea, Edom, and Dumia during the biblical and second temple uh, periods indicate that Edom was um that ruled he was he ruled in Mount Seir. Let me just skip through some of this. Enjoying you know yet the rabbinic rabbinic midrash associate Esau and Edom with a completely geographical era, the city of Rome and the Italian peninsula. And speaks as Romans are all Edomites. So they're trying to change this. This is a scholar who said the Romans were Edomites, which were true. Although you had our people mixed in there as well, but we're talking about in general. So this is why we read Malachi 1, and it says they will turn and build the desolate places they shall build, but I will throw down and call them the border of wickedness. Okay? Now, the, the Jake, who never even watched the whole video, had an issue with a couple of things I said and, you know, said, how could this be or whatever, or whatever. But when you read Ecclesiastes 1 and 9, it says there's no new thing under the sun. So anyway, where if Edom say if we are impoverished, but we would return and build the desolate places. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, they shall build, but I will throw down and call them the board of wickedness and the people, not just Esau, against whom the Lord have indignation forever. So we understand if the Romans were Edomites and they the ones had the children of Israel in the captivity. And then when you look at the the the, uh, the history of what happened, how they uh, the siege of Israel or Judea or Israel, what happened to the Israelites and got kicked out, then you can kind of go and see who the common enemy is, even when you fast forward to the slave trade, because you got to remember the Arabs uh, had the Israelites in slavery too. But who funded them? The Edomites as well. So you kind of put it all together, and how. Um, all these nations have had their hand in the children of Israel captivity. Now, these scholars don't look at the fact that all these things that they're reading, uh, some of it is future events. Jeremiah 30 and 16. 
Now, when did this ever happen? Right? Therefore, all they that devour thee shall be devoured, and all thine adversaries, every one of them, shall go into captivity. Right? So now we got to look at a time of history when all the children of Israel, every one of them, went into captivity in a whole. All nations. Okay? And you got to understand that we were scattered. And it says, and they that spoiled thee um, shall be a spoil, and all that prey upon thee will I give for a prey. Okay? So, um, pretty much it. You know, we proved the fact that, let's go to Isaiah. Okay, I want to touch on this because it's said that the Edomites can be saved, right? Let's go to Isaiah 10 and 20. And it shall come to pass in that day that a remnant of Israel and such as escaped them from the house of Jacob shall no more again stay upon and be smote that smote them, but shall stay upon the Lord and the Holy One of Israel in truth. The remnant shall return, even the remnant of Jacob, the almighty God. For though thy people Israel be as a sand of the sea, Hosea 1 and 10, yet a remnant shall return, right? So a remnant of the children of Israel is going to return. What we're trying to do is show according to biblical history, history in itself, according to the past, according to the present and according to the future, you can make the conclusion of who the real Edomites are, right? You can see that. You can see who the real Edomites are just by Rome, right? And how Rome looked. Did it not look like Petra Edom? And then they have the same characteristics as Edom. Do they do the same things? Right? Even today. He says they just go rape and uh, they're wild people. But did they not acknowledge the fact that what happened when they came over to the, to the islands and to the Americas and all the rape, robbery, and murder, and pillaging? They not understand what happened to that, the lynching. And they want to call the Arabs madmen, right? And they did get some of their tactics from the Arabs. Yes, they are to a degree. But when they came in power, when Edom came into power, that's what he did. And he took it on another level. So just going by process of elimination, right? When you look at the artifacts, the history, where he came from, his behaviors, his mannerisms, and Job 9, 24 saying the earth would be given into the hand of the wicked. And in the end times, who would be running the world? That's got to be the Edomites. Anyway, that's all I have on that. Shalom.